Are you Terry Sanderson? Are you Terry? I'm Terry. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Dan from Canal 2 News. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Thanks for coming. Sure. Hey, it's Winston. Terry, I'm going to put the microphone up for you. Hey, can you, uh, what, you want to move that water? Uh, that should be up the way for you. Fresh batteries. Fresh. I don't know how long we're going to be here. I'm going to give you a mic check. Did I ever tell any of you about my first press conference ever? I was 20 years old. It was in the old, I think, Channel 2 studios on Social Hall Avenue. Was it down there? Yeah. Where they were? And the cameras were, I don't know, six or seven times the mass of these. <laughs> you know? And it was the uh, Reagan campaign of 1968, the Utah version of it. I was down there with Doug Bischoff, who was the Reagan chairman. And this camera was on a big tripod and slowly uh, just began to tilt like this and just crashed over. Uh, and. Uh, the reporter said, there goes $20,000, you know, I don't know, uh, but they're a lot smaller these days. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> you can put your water up there if you want. Okay, first of all, uh, my name is Robert Sykes, most of you know me. Uh, I'd like to introduce the people that are here today. Uh, Dr. Terry Sanderson, retired optometrist, uh, originally from uh, Soda Springs, Idaho, moved down here a few years ago in his retirement. Uh, over here to my right is Lawrence Bueller, uh, who is the chief counsel for Dr. Sanderson, and my associate, Peter Sorensen. <coughs> we want to talk a little bit today about <coughs> excuse me, uh, skier responsibility. I don't know how many of you are skiers. I would think most of you would be living in this neck of the woods, uh, this part of the world. But um, every skier knows a couple of things. Uh, you cannot ski out of control. Where, no matter whether you're on the advanced uh, black diamond hill or the intermediate blue or the beginner green or the, the bunny hill for the, for the little kids, you ski in control, always ski in control, okay? Uh, <coughs> and every skier knows that the downhill skier has the right of way. That's because the downhill skier obviously doesn't have eyes in the back of his or her head 
and can't see behind them. And but the skier coming down the hill, uh, behind the downhill skier, can see everything. And so that person has the responsibility to avoid collisions. Okay, to avoid collisions. Dr. Sanderson, uh, I'll call him Terry, was not an inexperienced skier, but he wasn't an expert either. He had skied before. Uh, on this particular day, uh, he was at Deer Valley, and he was skiing, uh, kind of finishing his run, and I think the run was called Bananas, is that right? Bandana. 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 Excuse me. Bandana. Bandana. Okay. Bandana is a green slope. It kind of is at the end of the uh, run, since where people kind of congregate, and then they can go into the lodge, etc. cetera. Um, and because of accidents, I gave all of you one of these, but uh, it looks like this, and there's a uh, couple of things up top. This is from the responsibility code for skiers. Always stay in control and be able to stop or avoid other people or objects. Number one, people ahead of you have the right-of-way. That's the downhill skier. It is your responsibility to avoid them, okay? And then... Uh, some years ago, there's been a number of serious accidents, even deaths, uh, in Park City at the various resorts, and that's kind of par for the course. Uh, they have some very steep runs. Uh, occasionally, people get seriously hurt or killed. And so uh, Summit County enacted an ordinance. I think it was enacted in 2009, uh, but it says reckless skiing, and reckless skiing is prohibited. No person shall ski in a reckless or negligent manner so as to endanger the life, limb, or property of any person. Okay? Very, very important rule for skiers. And it even applies to celebrities, believe it or not. Okay? It applied to Gwyneth Paltrow. And as we say here, uh, you'll notice in this event, this uh, occurred on, I think of the exact date here, February 26. 2016, almost exactly two years ago, minus a month. <coughs> and on that day, that rule applied to Gwyneth Paltrow, okay, from Hollywood. Uh, B, skeeters duty to injured person, uh, injured party, in the event of a collision. You can all read that. But if you have a collision, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. You read this, these two, uh, B and C here, okay. Uh, it's your duty to hang around and render aid even if you didn't cause it. Now, she caused it. But you have a duty to stop, render, aid, help, report. Duty to report. Now, uh, as it says here, shall immediately stop at the scene of such collision and render to any person injured in such a collision reasonable assistance. Okay? Uh, what Miss Paltrow did that day was knock down Terry Sanderson, pick herself up, dust herself off, and ski off without rendering any help. Now, even without this statute or this ordinance, it would make sense that if you are involved in an accident, you stop and help. It's just common courtesy, kindness. And it didn't happen, okay? So not only does it violate the ordinance, but it's highly negligent. Now, luckily, Terry had a friend there that day skiing with him. He was about 30 or 40 feet away. We have a recorded statement from him. We don't have his permission to use it, okay? But I can tell you that he's there. We may be able, if you'll promise not to record it or a, a attribute, we may be able to show you part of it today. Uh, but it cannot be used with his name yet because we don't have permission. But on that day, February 26, 2016, Gwyneth Paltrow was skiing out of control, okay? Uh, now, Terry remem remembers hearing a scream. This witness heard a scream, looked over, and here's what happened. Gwyneth Paltrow hit Terry Sanderson at a very good rate of speed, a, a very high clip, uh, and then knocked him forward, knocked him over, broke four ribs, broke four ribs, caused his head to go into the snow and stop suddenly. He had a what we call a closed head organic brain injury from that, okay? 
has a lot of problems. You can ask him about those in a few minutes. Has a lot of problems from uh, that abrupt stop. It's like uh, uh, shaking baby syndrome. Uh, that brain goes back and forth. Uh, children don't have the musculature, etc. Uh, and that brain, even though it doesn't hit anything, can be injured. Well, it's the same thing with an adult. If you hit anything hard enough, even a packed snow, uh, that brain goes forward inside the skull and strikes the skull and it causes problems. Well, this is what he's got, uh, uh, permanent injury from this event. Okay. Now, um, the complaint that you have uh, gives all the facts, okay, uh, and it says here, hi, um, paragraph 23, Gwyneth Paltrow knew it was wrong to slam into Dr. Sanderson's back, knocking him down, landing on top of him, knocking him out, and then leave the scene of the ski crash she caused, but she did it anyway. That's kind of the essence of this cause of action, okay, paragraph 23, right here. So, uh, and, and so we have asked for uh, damages. Now, another thing that happened uh, is apparently Ms. Paltrow was skiing with a, uh, some instructors from Deer Valley, okay? One of them, an Eric Christensen, Christiansen maybe, uh, came over after. He did not see the impact. He came over afterward. Now, we only know this. Uh, Dr. Sanderson doesn't remember. He was mentally out of it there for a while. Doesn't actually remember this happening, but the witness said that it happened. The, the, the instructor came over, Eric Christian, Christiansen, and said, uh, berated the injured person with four broken ribs, lying senseless on the snow, for, quote, taking out Gwyneth Paltrow berated him. Uh, it's been very distressing for him to have heard that. And then he filed a false report with the resort. Okay. Uh, so that's why uh, Christiansen and the resort are involved in this. As you'll see here, uh, there's a, a duty to notify the operator or employee to see of any collision. Okay. Uh, and that resort had a duty to do a thorough and fair investigation of a collision where there were serious injuries. They had a duty to do that and did not, did not. Now, uh, let me see if I have anything else for you. Uh, you can ask Terry about this, but some of his long-term effects from being knocked out and having this uh, closed head brain injury or loss of short-term memory, uh, personality change, has a problem with directions and uh, uh, short-term memory. So those are some of the things that he has suffered as a result of this. Now, uh, first of all, before I turn it over to, to Lawrence and to him, do you have any questions for me? Seeing none. Yeah. Are these the ski laws, are they like recognized by the state? I think they're recognized by the by the skiing federations, uh, and I, I don't think anybody would think that these are controversial in any way. They're they're, they're not controversial. Okay. Uh, when you buy a ticket, are you obligated to? Not have, I mean, do you basically sign away your right to go after the resort or anything like that? As far as in some cases, it's not their fault. No, yeah, Dan. In some cases, you do. There's the inherent risk of skiing. One of the inherent risks of skiing. Uh, is uh, they hit a tree, or uh, occasionally uh, you know there's clumps of snow, uh, or you turn a ski inward. That's not the ski resort's fault. You don't get on the lift properly. Not the ski resort's fault. Okay, and it's not the ski resort's fault typically that a skier skis out of control on a, on a short-term basis and hits somebody. But it is the skier's fault. Where the resort is at fault here as we explained in the complaint, the resort is at fault for not taking proper action and the resort's employee is at fault and therefore the resort, resort is at fault for falsely blaming this on somebody that wasn't at fault. Okay. Almost never is the downhill skier going to be at fault. 
almost never. I mean, I can't say never because you could probably think of some kind of a scenario where it would be not th not that. <coughs> but typically, if the downhill skier is just skiing downhill like Terry was, not going to be at fault for someone hitting you from behind. Okay, that makes so, sense. So the resort's at fault for not taking proper action right. by assisting Mr. Sanderson. By assisting, by doing a proper report, getting all the names. <coughs> You'll see here a second cause of action. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we're saying that all these defendants, Deer Valley, Eric Christensen, John Doe's one and two, uh, caused emotional distress. They should have realized that by ignoring, denying assistance uh, uh, to and skiing away from plaintiff <coughs> after the collision would cause him to be, have emotional distress. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Channel 4 gave me this cold, by the way. They're not here. Uh, not that we know of, not that we know of um, but one of the reasons I do these press conferences, half the time I do them, I get a witness out of it. Somebody will see the report and call me and say, I saw this or I know something about it. And so uh, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody has a, a cell phone video, maybe they were taking a video or something else, I don't know yet. We, we haven't received anything, but we do have an eyewitness that saw it from 30 to 40 feet away. Why three years? I mean, it's been three years since this happened. I mean, that's a long time. Why are we waiting three years for this to come up? Yeah. I've, I've had the case about three months, okay? Um, and I don't know. Maybe you can ask that to um, Lawrence Bueller, but... Have you reached out to the Paltrow's people for we a have. out of court settlement? We have. Obviously they haven't, but they, I, I can't remember if they offered anything or not, but if they did, it wasn't very much. Uh, it was paltry. Have you no pun out, intended. Have you reached out to the resort? No. Not yet. Not yet. Um, let me do this. Before we have Terry speak, well, let's see, do you want to go ahead and go next, or you want to you go next? No, I'll go next. Okay. I'm going to push these over to Lawrence. See if you have anything to add, Lawrence. Scoot up. Yes. Scoot up okay. My name is Lawrence Bueller, uh, B U H L E R. I'm a Utah lawyer. So, are you co counsel or how are you? Uh, I'm uh, co counsel with Bob and Pete. Okay. Lawrence with a W? Yes, L A W R E N C. It's all on the complaint. It's um, all the correct spellings. Any general comments you want to make before we ask questions? Yes, uh, just you know, every skier knows, and every ski instructor knows the skier's code of conduct. And the first two parts are that when you do ski, you have to ski in control. And second, the people in front of you have the right of way. And the ski resorts also know in Summit County, Park City and Deer Valley, they also know there's an ordinance that if there is a ski collision, you have to report it to ski patrol. And you also, the people involved in the collision, they have to stay on the scene. And they have to give their names to the ski patrol, their names and addresses. That was not done in this case. Gwyneth Paltrow got up and when her instructor came down, she skied away, and the ski instructor skied away with her. And she had an entourage of uh, at least two other people, maybe another instructor, and maybe some children, which included her friend's children and her child, we understand. We don't have all the information. Deer Valley may have the information. Definitely Gwyneth Paltrow has more information. And I don't know if this is a question for you or you, but how did you know it's Gwyneth Paltrow? Uh, the ski instructor informed the witness as he was leaving that it was Gwyneth Paltrow. And then later on, we found out through uh, Terry uh, called up Deer Valley and said, what's going on? What, you know, why did you leave me there stranded? Uh, Terry was left unconscious 
dazed. He finally was able to get up. He was asked, do you know your name? It took him a few seconds to figure it out it, 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 because he, was, he had a brain concussion, head injury, closed brain injury. He uh, was then, then asked, what is, uh, do you know where you are? And Terry said, no, not really. The friend, the witness, you know, was left there alone. He, he was scared too. And he looked around and finally saw an employee and asked the employee to call the ski patrol. And the ski patrol came down and they put Terry in a toboggan and took him to the first aid station at the bottom. And that's where the incident was uh, reported further to the ski patrol. There, there are some who might look at this suit and say, well, you're filing it because it's a celebrity, whereas if a 13-year-old new skier kid that bumped in, you know, right all you over, they wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having this press conference. Do you want to respond to that? I think we would be having the press conference on any major ski collision where someone suffers a brain injury and has four broken ribs, and the at-fault skier skis away, and the at-fault, or the participating ski instructor skis away without rendering aid. So you're saying this is not about going after a celebrity? No. And her money? No, this is, this is a standard kind of ski collision case. It happens around the country. People get killed, people are injured. It happens. Over $3.1 million? For a brain injury, that uh, might be low. When, when you lose your memory, you lose much of your personality, your outgoingness, your ability just to drive without getting lost, it's, it's big. I almost never put a Mount San like that. You, I think you've seen my complaints. But this is Lawrence's call, and I don't think that's unreasonable, by the way. So I don't, I don't ever put that in complaints, generally speaking. And again, why three years? I mean, that's a long time. Why, why couldn't this have been settled earlier, or at least what's taken so long? You'll have to ask Gwyneth Paltrow and her counsel. And I'm so you say you've been going after her for that long? Terry reached out to Deer Valley, reached out to Gwyneth Paltrow, directly to their counsel, and the counsel, uh, they did nothing except further uh, inflict emotional distress on Terry by not being forthcoming, not telling them what happened, not admitting responsibility. It Let me have those back in. I want to make a comment. Yeah, can I ask real quick, it says in the lawsuit also that uh, Ms. Paltrow was distracted. Was she talking on her cell phone while she was skiing, or how was she distracted? Uh, we don't know, but she obviously screamed just before she hit Terry, and she didn't do it until it was too late. She was not looking where she was going. That's based on substantial uh, evidence from the witness. One, one last comment. Uh, a couple of you have mentioned uh, why, why so late. Uh, seldom do we have a case where, you know, all the facts are immediately clear. It took some investigation. Uh, we had to track down this witness. Uh, and uh, how do we know it was Gwyneth Paltrow? That was another question. We've actually met with her attorney. Her attorney's taken a, uh, a statement with our permission from the witness, okay? Uh, and, and they don't deny the collision. Their position is that Gwyneth Paltrow was downhill and um, uh, Terry Sanderson hit Gwyneth Paltrow is what, what I understand their position to be. Okay. We think that's totally false. We have an eyewitness that was there and saw everything. As far as we know, that's the only eyewitness. Okay. Let me put uh, Dr. Sanderson in here for a minute. <clears throat> um, first of all, do you have anything you want to say before they ask you questions? Anything, comments? Well, I, I just heard, a, you know, a few questions answered, asked, and weren't maybe completely answered. And one was why did it take so long? And the reason is I hit some dead ends. Attorney uh, retired from a partnership or moved out of a partnership, and he said he couldn't represent me anymore. So that was one dead end. Another one was he says, well, I do more medical liability cases, and so I don't do your kind of case. And so I hit a lot of dead ends, and I kind of got worn out of. You know, just tired of having to relive these circumstances, and um, and so I I drug my feet. Plus, I really there were 
there were a few months there where I, I really didn't have my faculties and uh, and uh, couldn't probably didn't didn't do the right thing and, and move forward. Um, I I did reach out. Um, I figured I she had my name for two or three years and um, and I figured maybe someday she'd just contact me and say, "Hey, you doing all right? And how's everything?" And and but no, I didn't. And uh, and so, um, uh, I don't know where else that's going, but. but again, you're oh, hold on one second. Excuse me. Craig's on the phone. Okay, hey, we're on. Should I put him food? Yeah, I'll tell you what, let me take it in your office. I'm going to, you go ahead and ask him questions. This is the witness. I'll be right back. See if I have permission to show this. But again, this is um, about damages for any skier that would have hit you. This isn't about uh, going out there. Celebrity or person who might have more money than the average skier. You know, I've skied for over 30 years. I've never knocked anybody down and hurt them. I've never been knocked down or gotten hurt. I think this is kind of a unique situation, and um, especially when um, uh, it was unkind, I think, to leave me there. I was feeling pretty vulnerable. Luckily, I, I went up that day with. With um, five other friends, and um, and so um, they luckily some hung back and were skiing behind, and some were moving ahead. But uh, now I forgot the question. So you're not going after her because she has money. Well, no, I th I think it's a, I think it's um, it's gone on, and then and then it's changed. They're trying to twist the story around, and it's like. I, I have some pride in the truth, and uh, and so I guess maybe that's why I want to push forward. So can you take us back to February 26? What what was happening? Just give us the whole count. What happened that day? It's um, I really I I have reliving this is hard. It's hard, and I've had to do it a number of times, and and um, so. Uh, that day, I met up with uh, five other friends. Uh, we hadn't skied Deer Valley uh, before. I, I won't call them friends. They were acquaintances. We just decided we got an extra pass. Let's go up to Deer Valley. And so uh, so we did. And um, um, we were enjoying our day. It was a beautiful day. It was a crowded resort. And uh, Bandana connected over into some other good skiing areas. And so we were on this run. Green run, beginner's run, and um, um, I could kind of keep track of my friends and kind of have a sense about where they were. Uh, we passed two huge signs that said slow down. Big signs, biggest two refrigerators, it seems like. I haven't seen them since, but it said slow down. So I slowed down and, and maintained the flow of traffic and, and, um, and uh, just enjoying the day. and. Um, then I heard this this hysterical scream like you never hear on a ski run. Never have heard it in my life. Just absolutely like King Kong came out of the jungle or something. I, it, it's just like, and then it was just instantaneous. I got hit in my back. It felt like right about shoulder blades. It felt like it had just, I mean, drove me forward downward. And all I could think about is there was a lady that was kind of beside me, and I thought, don't, don't get her tangled up in this because she may not be able to handle it either uh, as a beginner. And so um, so I, I, I remember trying to lurch to my right and I couldn't control it. And I didn't realize there was weight on my back. And, and so um, uh, at least that's what I understand. And so um, I, I just remember my arms not being able to control myself and going down and, and then that's that's all I remember to that point, just out. And I was told I was out. So the screen was kind of like somebody who just realized at the last second a collision was inevitable? Perfect. That's exactly like, it's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And boom, it happens. Exactly. How long were you out, Terry? You know, I, I don't know. Honestly, I have to rely on what other people that said you were out five minutes or ten minutes or, or, or something like that. Yeah. And apparently I was... I was in and out, and uh, I um, apparently someone was in my face, and I, 
asking me or accusing me, and I remember feeling sorry, like I got to apologize or something. And, and I just, I mean, I was vulnerable, right? I felt like, like, geez, I maybe I hurt somebody, and I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. So um, that uh, after that, uh, I I don't know how much more detail you want. When you I, woke up, yeah. What do you remember then? I remember feeling sore. My ribs were really sore, and my brain felt like I'd been injected with Novocaine. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just numb. Nothing was making sense or going on. Things weren't processing. No, no, it was. Yeah, and so I, I, I remember hearing somebody say, "Are you all right?" At least that this is what I seemed like happened. And I leaned back towards the voice and turned around, and I realized I couldn't. I couldn't see him. I had no idea. And then I figured out, oh, my goggles are full of snow, my, my helmet, everything was filled up. And so I cleaned, them, cleaned off and looked around again, and I could, I could see Craig, and I could see another guy, and it looked like a Park City ski jacket, what I would expect it to be. And or Deer Valley. Deer Valley, yeah, Deer Valley. So I... Um, Green. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, Craig started saying, you are you okay? And I said, my ribs really hurt. And then he said, well, do you, do you know who you are? Do you know your name? And I said, well, I can't believe how long it takes me to, to get that information gathered up. And then, um, then he said, well, do you know where you are? It seems like this is what he said. And do you know where you are? And, and I said, I, I know I'm skiing, but I have no idea where I'm skiing. And that's when the skiing guy that was there that I really thought was there to help, he left. And I remember having a sinking feeling in my stomach, like, like, oh my God, there's, there's, there's the person that I thought was going to help me and help us because my friend doesn't know anything about medical stuff, I don't think. So um, he helped me up, and uh, this acquaintance helped me up. He was acquaintance at that point, and and got me up and he says, do you think you can get down? I said, I can try, but it, my ribs really hurt, really hurt. And I can't think. So he got me up and he started started down the hill and he said, stop, stop. He says, you've forgotten how to ski. You have no idea what you're doing. He said, I'm going to go find help. That seems like that's what I remember. And it seemed like he left. I remember being huddled up on the hillside, on the edge of the hill. By yourself? By myself, absolutely. And skiers going by and then he shows up with somebody who was apparently a ski host and uh, they called a ski patroller over and uh, it was just it seemed like it was 20 seconds she was there and the shallow it's a shallow run so it was a beginner so it wasn't she, one person came with a sled I've never been in a sled but I usually see two on them so so she uh, she got me in, my skis were still on. I have no idea how they got off, and I, I they were in the sled, and uh, took me down. It's a bumpy ride. I'll tell you that anybody hasn't been in one shakes the heck out of you. It's like a toboggan, right? Oh yeah, it's a toboggan. Yeah, yeah. So broken ribs. It's broken sick. ribs, and well, I kept thinking, I hope my head's still on, you know, straight, and the neck's okay. But you said you had a helmet on that day. I did. I've since bought a better Mips helmet. I found out about that takes a little of that torque away, but haven't used it. So what are your injuries? What were your injuries then? Well, my injuries were at least four broken ribs and, and um, is what I seem like I remember seeing that in a report and a concussion. And the doctor said, well, you know, um, you know that ribs just take time. And uh, they take time. And there's those that haven't had them. Uh, just a sneeze or, you know, when your lung starts to expand to sneeze, you can't stop it. And you feel your ribs breaking again. Even after three months, you can feel them cracking. You know, the rib cage is reshaping. So ribs and then the concussion, they said that that, that takes time too. It's just going to take you time. And for three or four months, I really felt like I was, um, I worried about it. I felt I'm mentally ill. I really felt mentally ill. If anybody tests me, they're going to find that out for sure. And luckily, I had friends that were supportive and called and checked in on me. And... Uh, helped me and stayed with me in some cases because I sat in a chair 
I sat in a chair and I couldn't do anything, I couldn't function. And so I get so tired, I <coughs> go to bed. I just go crawl in bed again. So it's a long term effects. You still I'm still suffering finding, from what? I'm still finding them out. I mean, the other day, my daughter called me and said she got a call from a, a former SO who said, I'm really worried about Terry because he's isolated. Former he's SO? SO, significant other. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, and she says, I, I'm really worried about him. He's really changed. I didn't know that. He, you know, um, he's, yeah, and he's isolated himself. He's, in, in, you know. Um, one of, one so of the classic, the one of the classic what? consequences of a brain injury uh, are personality changes. And, and the individual doesn't normally notice them, but other people do. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you've been in touch with Altros people. Who have you been in touch with, and what have they told you or offered you, or what's that been like over this um, you know, I when I first thought I could think a little bit, I constructed a letter to her, and and then I never sent it out. I just thought if she knew that how badly I was hurt, she'd want to get involved. Well, then I think what happened is the ski resort furnished the names because of my inquiries and and furnished my name to her and furnished her name to me. And um, so I kept thinking maybe. How, how long after the event? Oh, six months, eight months or so. Yeah. But, um, but then I got, a, I got a call from her attorney who said, um, don't talk to her. Um, you talk to me. So as an amateur, what did I do? I went down and talked to him. And he asked me everything he wanted. I said, I just got the truth for you. That's all I have. So I'm. Um, um, yeah, he had me draw up a picture of what happened and then jerked it away from me when I got the elements on there that I think he felt was valuable. Can I say that? I don't know. Sure. Um, so, I don't that answer your question. So, so then what, did so he ever offer you any um, monetary package or how did, what happened after that initial meeting with the attorney? You know, S Steve says, well, I remember him saying to me, well, what do you, what do you take? And I said, I have no idea. I've not had this happen before. I, I have no idea. And I don't know where this is going to go. And uh, um, So were you still practicing at this point? Or no, I've been retired. And had, do you ski at your valley before? Never. We had the free ticket, free pass. I usually ski out there. Okay, so that was your first time at Deer Valley. Yeah. And had you recently but, moved to Utah? But let me clarify. Oh, okay. First time at Deer Valley, but... Um, one of the acquaintances with us was a former ski instructor up there. Others had skied there numerous times. So it's, it's you know, it, it, ski resort is a ski resort. It's not uncommon to ski it, but first time up there. First time. And I don't know if I can say this, but a lot of people that ski up there don't know what they're doing. They like the poshness, but they don't know what they're doing, I think. My summary. I've heard other people have told me that. Maybe you've talked about him as both a friend and an acquaintance. What can you tell us? I mean, I understand if you don't want to give out a name, but what can you tell us about the witness? We're going to show you the video. He, that call I had was him calling in to say I could show the video. Well, what's, you know. His name is Craig, name's Craig Ramon, R-A-M-O-N. And in a few minutes, I'll show you a little segment. And if you want a copy of it, you, know, you should have it. So that would be in the lawsuit. But I'm the sorry, witness? can I just finish this? Um, sure. Uh, are they going to be able to say, well, he's a longtime friend of his, of course he's going to testify on his behalf? That's that's what I'm talking about. Well, about. number one, he wasn't a longtime friend. He They're was ski acquaintances. They meet for yeah. skiing. Gotcha. <coughs> there apparently is a uh, groups of people around town. I, I would never know because I'm always down here working until late. Uh, you can put that in your stories, by the way. I've been a feeling. hard worker. Bob Sykes is. But... Uh, uh, they just meet up. Uh, what do they call them? meet and greet? Well, it's called meet up. And I, I'm a ski meet organizer. Up yeah. I'm a ski organizer for the meet up group. Yeah. And so there are men and women. Uh, I think there were six or seven that day. I am, yeah, we had I think oh. six today. That and and that's showed what up for doing. that meeting. And there we're acquaintances. We we definitely don't hang out. We ski together, you know. And um, not 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 good friends. Just no. We're at lunch. And Craig is the same way. He was one of those acquaintances that I'd seen. Maybe three or four times before, and he joined in with the group. He loves to ski. He skis every day. And uh, so, um, yeah, that's. 
Are skiing? you an intermediate skier, <coughs> an advanced skier? How would you characterize your skiing? At the road? time. I've been told that I'm an intermediate advanced, that um, my friends will also say, Terry, you're not the same. You used to follow us down every hill. You'd go anywhere with us. And, uh, and I felt like I, I knew who didn't ski shoots and the big bumps, uh, you know, and I <coughs> followed them down the hill. Or, uh, but but I, I felt like I was comfortable, comfortable on skis and, uh, and um, yeah. So some may ask, I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow, not a very big woman, very petite, thin, how could she cause so much damage? And what proof or what evidence do you have that all these things happen? I thought of that long and hard too. Um, uh, and, and you know, I think velocity explains it. The difference in speed explains it. I think you, it doesn't matter. A little bitty bullet can make a big hole, you know. Uh, it's, it's, I think that's the answer. She had to be, and as hard as I got hit, she had to be going much faster than I was to make up for that. But I was going downhill too, so when she hit me, of course, my head fell down the hill, so it went eight feet or ten feet. It went not just my height, so. Um, um, the witness will say she landed on top of him. She hit him, landed on top of him, slid off. Terry was taken down by a toboggan, four broken ribs. He was diagnosed with a brain concussion you know, very shortly thereafter. And so you have all this medical stuff yes. to show that all these things happened to you? Yes, it all happened that day. It all happened February 26, 2016. Do you guys know what kind of skier she is? Were these uh, instructors bodyguards or are they helping her? What, what was the capacity? Um, you, you may have to ask Deer Valley that. We don't know all the details of her skiing. Or what level she was on. Right. She, we understand she had probably at least two ski instructors and she had a boyfriend and children from her family and his family. So again, maybe just summing things up, Terry, if you don't mind. Those that are out there that are skeptical, just saying, "Okay, we've got a big-time actress loaded with money up on the hill. She bumps into you, and now you're going after her pot of gold." Well, I, I'm repeating myself to say I, I, I think it. I'm a proud person, and I don't like to be told that I'm not telling the truth, and that she now is telling my truth. I. I don't know what else I can say about that. That's offensive to me. Who's telling you that you're not telling the truth? Well, she is, and her attorneys are, I guess, by, by, by actually trying to claim that I hit her. At least that's what I'm understanding is happening, and that I might get countersued because I hurt her and hit her. And, and, um, but she didn't get hurt because I, she understands she went down and had lunch with her entourage and family and, and then had a massage. So. You said it. You thought about writing, you wrote a letter you never sent, and that you thought, initially thought if she knew, she would reach out to you to apologize. What do you think now about her after all this whole, whole ordeal? Well, I, I, I suppose it was, a, it was an unkind gesture, maybe. You know, not, not to stick around or write back and check in or something. I, it was, she knows, she knows what happened, and I was just, I guess that's what I feel. Do you think if she would have reached out to apologize, you would have let this go? There was a point in in this whole thing, uh, in this process, many times I, I thought um, that would be uh, sufficient. But when I started getting my senses about me, I, I started feeling more strongly about the fact that this was wrong. Yeah, And it took a long time. And to answer another question about the attorneys. I, I hit some dead ends on a couple attorneys. Oh, I told, did I say that already? I repeat myself all the time. But, so this is as much about pride as it is personal injury? Well, yeah, maybe, yeah. What would it's you like both. to see come out of all this? Well, I'd like to be vindicated. And I'd like the truth to be told. So her attorneys actually asserted to you and said to you that they believe you caused the accident. They told us that, Judge. He told yes, me. He that, told me. that they told us 
some convoluted, uh, unclear story that somehow it, it wasn't her fault. When I visited with him, he said, you know, when people get in accidents, they get all mixed up and twisted around. And he says, how do you know you didn't, uh, she did, you didn't hit her? And, uh, and that was the first clue I got. And then, and then it seemed like he said something to me later, well, you better, you better count yourself lucky because she hasn't sued you yet. He actually told me that too, back that meeting with him. So raise that specter and that is a, that is a, you know, this is, this is a, it's a big deal. I'm not used to being in this position. But these gentlemen were not your attorneys at the time of that meeting. That's correct. I, yes. Those attorneys then subsequently told your new attorneys. No, no. That picture, that attorney, the first attorney, my friend said, "You need to call somebody. You need to get somebody involved in this." And and uh, they said, "There's a there's a phone number at the bottom of the hill called Ski Law, Ski Law, maybe." And uh, there's a phone number. Call them. So I started with why I thought I'd be in Salt Lake, was in Colorado. So then he interviewed, I understand, Gwyneth and some other people, but then he changed law firms and had to tell me he couldn't take the case and I recommended someone here in town, which is what I wanted. And then I didn't feel comfortable with that one and a couple of younger guys. And so, um, these are not younger guys. <laughs> so um, I like them. And so, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's, so I was dead in it. Yeah, I told you about the rest of them, yeah. Sorry, um, just so I'm clear, <coughs> would you ever offer any kind of money or compensation to say, okay, let's just, this is what we'll give you? No. Bob and Lawrence, did, did, did her attorneys ever make a, 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 a specific offer to you? No. But you've met with her attorney? Yes. And those attorneys have asserted to you that they believe that Terry and not Gwyneth Paltrow caused the crash? In so many words. But it's not very clear what they're saying. And um, it, it is very intimidating, and I know people who are intimidated, being feeling intimidated by, well, you might get sued, you might lose your house. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. We, we have permission to show this, and I assume we can give it to you too, but um, Lawrence, help me. We have Craig Ramon. Yeah, but here's what we got. It, at his house. But is, 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 is it the 20th or the 21st? Is there a chance you could turn that uh, yeah, lamp off that's behind there? I will. Uh, the 21st, um, I mean the date. Turn that light, light off right there, will you? Yeah, I've got one the 20th and 21st. Do you remember which? You know, <coughs> I wasn't going to show these today. I didn't have permission, so I'm a little bit unprepared. Give me about 90 seconds here. You want me to see them? Let's look no. at this for a minute. Which of these? That's two gigs and three, ten or three tenths of a gig. This one is the 21st. This one's the 20th. Um, in Idaho, we're called optometric physicians. We have more advanced training in therapeutics, full prescription drug privileges. Um, Did you work service. in a hospital or have your own practice? I, yeah, I, had, I had two practices, and I, two and practices. I, I had, I had uh, hospital privileges in two hospitals. So this is uh, my interview of Craig at his home. He's the witness. And, uh, this, Can you was, put the mics by this? It was please? casual. I just showed up at his house. Yeah. He, he agreed to let me video tape. Yeah, okay. Just ask. I just asked him what happened. This is the uh, about an 18 minute interview, and he just he saw the whole thing. And he's Craig Ramon, the usual spelling: C R A I G Ramon R A M O N. R A M O N. Thank you. Okay. I'm interested too because I haven't seen this. Hey, thanks, Craig, for talking with me today. Um, I have your permission to record this. Yes. Okay. 
And uh, as I understand it, you were skiing at Deer Valley the day Terry got hurt at Deer Valley on a beginner run. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, it was Bandana, I believe. Uh, I don't, yeah, I, my, I'm not, I think that's what it is. Okay. You were skiing with a group, and Terry and you were the, Terry Sanderson and you were the two last ones skiing in the yes. group. Um, uh, tell us what happened then. Well, they, <clears throat> well, everybody started going down, and then Terry went down, and I was behind him, and then all of a sudden I heard a, like a yell or something, a noise, and then I, so I looked over to see it, and that's when I saw Gwyneth hitting him in the back, and then she hit him perfectly in the back, and, and as they were going down, it looked like one person basically going down. And so, so then as they're going down like this, she, she lands right on top of him. And then she slides off to the side. And so, so she's off to the one side, and then there's a ledge that's right next to it. So she's pretty close to the ledge. So I skied up onto the other side. So there's, there's Gwen, Terry, and then there's me. And uh, and Gwen is starting to, to get up, trying you know trying to get up, and then a mountain host came down to uh, to the other side of me, and so then the mountain host started uh, yelling at Terry, and uh, you know and just what did you do? What did you do? And uh, and then Terry wasn't moving or anything, and he was face down. His skis. His skis are pointing, he didn't lose his skis, his skis are pointing directly out like this, and he's face down the hill. And, uh, and so then, then uh, he, he keeps on, on, on you, know, you know, talking to Terry, and Terry's not moving. And then, and then his voice, the mountain hoods, his voice starts to get louder and louder and louder. And, uh, and then as he keeps on yelling at him, and, and then Gwen is trying to get up, and she's having a hard time getting up. And uh, and so then, uh, after he was he was you know started to get a little bit Terry. Uh, no, actually the mountain host. He started just to just get like really out there. What do you mean? Uh, just started to yell at it. Yell at Terry. Yeah. The mountain host was yelling at the Terry. The mountain host was yelling at Terry. And, you know, and what you know, what did you just do? You know, and. And so then I, so I, I'm like, man, mail him out, you know. I, I thought that I, I didn't say it to him, but I was thinking in my head, the guy's not even moving, you know. Just be cool. And so then I, 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 because there was Terry, then there was me, then there's a mountain host. And so then I just kind of skied a few feet in front of him, so I was blocking, you know, his view of Terry. And then, and then from there, uh, a, a guy, a guy that was. Uh, that was with with uh, with with Gwyneth, and he, he was a tall. He was. And then, um, so finally, you know, so I started asking Gwyneth, you know, are, are you okay? Yeah, okay? And she wouldn't say anything. And uh, and then he was a tall. He was a kind of a taller guy, skinny guy. A guy that was uh, that was with with uh, with with Gwyneth, and he, he was a tall, he was a, kind of a taller guy, skinnier guy, and he came up, and then a little kid came up behind Gwyneth, and uh, and then um, so finally, you know, so I started asking Gwyneth, you know, are you, are you okay? And she wouldn't say anything, and then I just, you know, and I. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how many times I asked her, but I asked her probably five or six times, and she wouldn't say anything. And and uh, and then and then um, and then she and then the uh, the the, uh, the the the, uh, the after 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 that the Gwyneth. Um, and this was going on for a little bit, then Terry did start moving, and he was still face down, and uh, he, he couldn't get, he was having a hard time getting up, because the way he was set, I mean, his feet are up like this, and that's the, his head's downhill, and so, so, uh, so he, he starts 
to try to move, you know, get around. And so finally he does get his skis around, and so he's kind of facing downhill, and he can't get up. And then, and then Gwyneth, she, she, uh, she ends up um, going down. So now she's probably about 15 feet, 10, 15, well, probably about 15 feet from me. And, and, and uh, the, the, uh, the guy, the mountain host, he said, he said, uh, he says, you know, your buddy just took out one of the Paltrow. And, uh, and, and, you know, and he was, uh, he was, the way he was yelling at him, I was thinking, man, he, he must have saw something I didn't. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, Glenn didn't even have, she didn't have any, anything on her face, any, any mask, any goggles, anything. And, and I didn't even recognize her. And if, if the mountain host wouldn't have said to me that, that it was Gwyneth Paltrow, I would have never known. And so then when she said it was Gwyneth Paltrow, I, I kind of backed up a little bit and then I started to ski kind of down towards her, you know, to say, are you okay, you know? And then and when I started to come, you know, ski to her, she ended up taking them and taking off. She, through the whole thing, she didn't say a single word. And, and, and then at that point, the, the, the guy that was with her came by me and gave me the dirtiest look. I, 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 I don't know why, but I tell you, if looks could kill, I would have been, <laughs> been done for. And then the, the little kid that was with him, they took off and followed her. And, uh, and then, so the mountain host, um, he couldn't leave Terry just laying there. He, sh he should have called, called you know, the... Uh, the ski patrol, because I mean, he, you know, he finally he's moving and he's groaning, and and, and uh, so then he he goes over. And I didn't know what to do, you know. I mean, Terry's not moving. I mean, you know, when he finally does start moving, and and then and then the mountain host, you know, grabs Terry's hands and picks him up and gets him on his skis, and then once he once Terry was on his skis, she or the mountain host takes and bolts takes right off. And after, 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 after Gwyneth, and and uh, and so they were they were um, pretty much a group, and and then and then Terry he was just he, you know you could tell he was in pain, and uh, and and he wasn't uh, you know he just he wasn't really moving too well, and he wasn't really saying much and just and so I'm like well. You know, let's let's go down. It's, it's not. It's an it's an easy run to get down to the bottom. What did did you talk to Terry? Uh, yeah, man, I'm sitting. I'm, I'm I'm Terry is right here. I'm right here, and the mountain house comes up, and I'm I'm just a few feet away okay. from him. What did you say to Terry? At this point, I didn't really. I didn't. You know, say say too much. Like like, are you okay? Or or you did say that though. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I had, I, it was, you know, like, you, you know, you all right, or, you know, and I'm like, and he was just kind of, just wasn't really there. What do you mean by wasn't really there? He just, he just seemed dazed. And uh, was he saying anything? Not really. No, he just, uh, he wasn't saying much of anything. And so then, so then I'm like, okay, let's just get down to the bottom of the hill. And, uh, and then we'll just deal with it. I've seen enough, i more than this. And so then we start going down the hill, Jet and he's really five. having a hard time. I can give you a copy of it. That's an easy hill. A copy would be good. And uh, so we end up going down, going around this bend. This is going to go, go just like this head first and stop you here. You use your edges. That's how you, st that's how you stop, okay? Yeah. And, and so if you can imagine. You're, you're going down the hill and somebody hits you directly from behind. Your skis go out like this, your edges catch and stop you. you you'll stop you, you know, stop you on a dime and you go just like this, head first into the ground. <laughs> and then you have somebody on top of you going head first. That's why there was so much damage. Is that what happened to Terry? Yeah, Terry, yeah, this, this is Terry, this is Gwyneth. Go, go just like this, head first. 
and she lands right on top of him, and Terry's not moving down the hill. If you crash and you're going down the hill, yeah. it diverts part of the, the you know, the the, uh, the pressure, so to speak. Um, yeah. And so let's go. Um, um, you're with Terry. Um, Any other questions for anybody? Terry, how tall are you? Turn the, turn the lights on, you? How tall are you and what do you weigh? Thank you. Five foot eight, 160 pounds. I didn't hear. I didn't hear Five foot eight, 160 pounds. And your age or what is your age? Yeah, I said, I think I surprised my friends. I probably go, look, I quit hanging out with them. So I, I don't repeat the words, in, but I can. Is this off the record? I'm 72. Well, nothing's 72. off the record here, but I mean, we just okay. want, I guess we were trying to get perspective, sure. perspective. as far as your age and, and everything like that. And so you, you were 69 at the time. Yes. Okay. So perspective now is what? Since I was 69 at the time. Do you have a different perspective? No, no. I think viewers or listeners are interested as to, well, what's her age, what's her height, what's her weight? As opposed to yours, that kind of thing. So, in the area where you collided, uh, was it?